You ever see a video and you just can't not click? Well, case in point, I came across this on Autoline Network. World's first Cybertruck teardown. This has got to be good. So was it a hassle getting the battery out of here or what? Yeah, much like the Model Y, uh, the Cybertruck followed suit and the body in white doesn't have a floor. Now for 100 years when we made bodies, they had a floor. You know, when, uh, if you had a body group, they made a body that was structurally sound, took all the loads that it would experience. It gave you environmental security, it made you warm when you're cold and you know, cool when you're hot and, and safe in crash and, and quiet and smooth. Uh, and when you did that, you believe you had a place to place your feet. I mean, there was a floor. Uh, with uh, the integration uh, activities that, that were really kind of a paradigm that was uh, broken by Tesla on the Model Y, is the body in white has no floor. So I just wanted to take a quick break. Already, some of the very first words out of his mouth is that the automotive industry did things a certain way for literally a century, a hundred years. And then Tesla came along and broke the rules, AKA figured out a way to do things smarter, better, more efficiently. This is a recurring theme. It took Tesla, some idiots from Silicon Valley who don't know how to make cars, to figure out a better way to make cars. Awkward. It simply takes the top of the battery, and then when they install the battery pack, it becomes the floor of the vehicle. Real smart move. It's and then they put the seats move. and the, the carpeting and the center console on top of all that. It goes up Even before one it's unit. installed. Right, so yeah. So it just makes assembly that much yeah, easier. Yeah, yeah. Now, the, the top of the battery had to be made a little thicker in order to, to do that double duty, but uh, still, in, it, they enjoy a great efficiency gain by doing that. So right. uh, here's where we are. Uh, in this case, uh, Taking the batteries out of these things is a challenge. It's always a discovery. How are they held in there? And, and just, the, just the bulk of it. How do we take it down safely and all these things? Uh, actually, this one came out quite easily. You know what's cool when you, you, you pull all this out is you start to see some of the castings that are right into the, the passenger compartment. Tesla's taking the castings further and further, as we'll see on this truck. Uh, here, the rear seat, the structure for the rear seat is a casting. So they've, they've taken that rear casting and now they've extended it here with a, a rear seat. And, and Terry, as well what, as the front seat. Yeah. The front seat's also on castings. On castings. Instead of just a stamping, which is a typical roll for stamping for a seat track, mm -hmm. they're casting. Well, these insights are already becoming quite a big deal. It was inevitable over time. Tesla first starting with a decently sized casting for a portion of the rear in a single vehicle, then the entire rear. Now we're seeing Cybertruck, a gigantic casting in the back extending into the rear seats and we've also now learned that even the front seats sit upon a casting now the reason this matters so much is because each casting deletes dozens if not hundreds and i do mean this literally dozens or hundreds of parts that need to be assembled fastened together handled stored not only does this save costs but time complexity potential points of failure as we've heard musk say years ago really did mean this. The best part is no part, and the best process is no process. And we're seeing this manifest in Tesla's latest vehicles. We've heard a recent update from Elon Musk on X that Cybertruck is ramping quite well. That's good news. And it's important to understand, not only is it going to be impossible for Tesla's so-called competition to compete in terms of producing a vehicle that's comparably tough and functional to Cybertruck without mimicking the stainless steel exoskeleton and figuring out how Tesla developed a certain alloy to actually do this. So the toughness, durability, unless you copy and then everyone points and laughs and goes, oh, you losers, you copied the Cybertruck, not going to be able to make it. In addition, internally, we're seeing that this thing is next level engineering genius. More large castings used equals more money saved manufacturing, meaning once this thing is ramped up to reasonable volumes, Tesla is going to have a massive cost advantage over others attempting to produce even slightly compelling, tough electric trucks. This is a very positive sign. The more castings we see, actually technically, the larger the castings we see, and the more castings replacing individual parts we see, the better. Of course, from a consumer's point of view, no one cares, no one notices, no one gives a shit. But from an investor's point of view, and or an engineering nerd's point of view, this is a big deal. And another example of Tesla's big brain engineers, wait for it, ready? <laughs> Leading the charge. Cause, cause, cause uh, you know, cause, yeah, anyway. I'll see myself out. And uh, it looks like they're painting it or coating it in some way yeah, because I've seen some of their other castings and it's just coarse aluminum. Yeah, no, the, uh, from stem to stern, you'll see that. Uh, that coating Why apply. do you think they're coating it? Uh, corrosion. And then the other thing you were telling me before, any place I see one of these blue connectors, 
that means it's 48 volts. Yeah, one of the really you know, things we're very curious about here, and we really want to do a good job of uh, analyzing and documenting, is the 48 volt architecture. And uh, we found out that they did something pretty clever in that all the circuitry that is 48 volts has this blue, uh, the, the wiring harnesses have blue stripes on them, uh, the connectors have blue. The high voltage stuff is, is the orange, the typical don't cut here kind of a thing. Um, and so that, that's, you can see where that uh, comes in. We are uh, kind of challenged that we have to go deep into virtually every electrical system because it's not all 48 volts. Interesting. Some of it remained at 12 volts. And so, and very, because so, the perception out there is it's all 48 uh, Yeah, and it was my perception, yeah, 48, boom, you know, it's, it's, they swallowed the pill and did it. And it's like, well, yeah, they swallowed the pill and did it, but not everywhere. So we're going to do a deep inventory, which systems are, uh, which ones aren't, and then how do they step down that 48 well, volts down to a, a 12 volt legacy system. Sure, but I mean, you know, I gotta believe there's some things like a dome light or whatever. You don't need 48 volts for a dome light, right? Or, you know, a vanity a mirror light that type of thing. So yeah. we'll, uh, we'll, we'll find it out and we'll document where they did and, and, and where they didn't. What's, what? Here is the battery this that is, you took out. This is, the, uh, this is the center of attention here. This is the battery, 800 volt. Uh, battery system with uh, the castings As you for the see, front seat. I mentioned that the, the seat riders were actually castings, and so they're there. This is the position that they would be in. Uh, the the battery can be dressed. It can have carpet on. It can have wiring harnesses. You can see a ribbon wire connector. That's uh, that's there. The the penthouse uh, battery control in the back. And again, uh, relatively straightforward from a connectivity, a cooling, and electrical yeah. circuit. Well, I can't wait to see once you guys tear into this battery what you find out. Yeah. Well, this indestructible yellow plastic uh, cable <laughs> keeps us away from it until it's uh, totally uh, discharged. discharged. Yeah. And we do. We discharge the batteries before uh, we disassemble. And then we put shunting cables on to keep them from regrowing a charge. The mega casting story continues to grow. Uh, you can see this. Very large rear casting. That is a here. gigantic it's, casting. It's I mean, no wonder they call it Giga, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, if, and if you look where they came with the Model Y rear casting to what we're doing now, it's it's huge. And then these buttresses, these big castings that uh, that are attached to it, even here. So it could, all the structure going in this fashion. You can see the air cylinder for the air suspension here. And again, the the castings are painted. They're yeah. rather conveniently from our point of view. We can see visually, based on colour, how much of this rear is cast. A fuck ton. In unrelated matters, it's certainly going to be convenient that Cybertruck is colour coded for assembly. Blue, wiring for the 48 volt architecture. We have coloured castings as well. If only a company like Tesla or somebody else who could sell humanoid robots to Tesla had solved vision, because this would be a nice assist some of the early days in trialling humanoid robots for assembling these vehicles. Coded yeah, in some way. Just, you can see where they where they have a coating on them. Interesting. Okay, look. These, these uh, timbre doors, by the way, in order to get these things out, like even the battery, this this tonneau cover has to come off. Well, it takes a doctorate degree to get one of these things out. It is really hard. In fact, uh, in the typical service, there's a, a fixture that comes in the back, and you unroll the whole top into a fixture that rolls away and then you can feed it back in when you're wow. done. So uh, otherwise I understand it comes in a lot of little pieces. <laughs> One of those learning events. So some very positive signs here from the quote, world's first Cybertruck teardown. Castings everywhere, massive castings. That means money saved, time saved, complexity saved, processes saved, failure points deleted. No doubt Cybertruck is Tesla's most ambitious product to date and it's most advanced in terms of the manufacturing techniques. And remember, this is V1. Tesla has a history of innovating incrementally, constantly on each of their products, making them better, faster, cheaper, and smarter. In other words, this is literally the worst and most embarrassing version of the Cybertruck we'll ever see. The least profitable, the least efficient. Can't wait for the rest of the teardown series. Not only from Caresoft, but also Monroe & Associates. Want more content? Early access? 
bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 has given me a massive meaningful boost in energy, allowing me to do a lot more every day, including using my brain more and using my body more. I highly recommend you guys and girls check it out. It's an excellent way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's got 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients, plus prebiotics and probiotics and digestive enzymes and adaptogens to help you deal with stress. Plus, if you click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR, you can get yourself a one year free supply of vitamin D3 and K2. But don't take my word for it. Here's what some of you guys and girls have to say. AG1 has changed my life. I was, as you described, treating myself like a circus. I ate like trash, rarely exercised, used alcohol as a stress crutch, cannabis also. AG1 is what gave me the kick in the ass, got me back to the gym, motivated me to do more for myself, family, my business, etc. Keep doing what you do. Now, I know there's some skeptics, the same kind of people who think Elon Musk is a fraud reading this going, what do you thought? There's no way that's possible, bro. It must be a placebo effect. Believe it or not, this is a recurring theme. If you give your body everything it needs to feel and perform its best, including having a lot more energy, you'll need ways to use that energy. For me personally, that includes more exercise, moving my body more, more social activity, and more cognitively demanding tasks, including producing a fuck ton of exclusive content over on Twitter and on Patreon, plus my daily YouTube uploads. The proof's in the pudding. On to another testimonial from a viewer of this channel. SMR, you asked me to provide feedback on AG1. Here it is. It has helped with mental acuity, stamina, and intestinal waste management. <laughs> uh, can't read between the lines. It certainly helps with regularity and digestion. That's what the digestive enzymes are for. It has also dramatically reduced my cravings for sugar. You guys need to stop eating sugar. It's fucking poison. I'm 50, 5'9", and overweight, aka a fat motherfucker. I think that's a technical term for overweight, isn't it? Is it fat motherfucker or obese? I can't remember. I average 100 hours a week in the West Texas oil fields as a safety supervisor. Jesus Christ, dude. No wonder you're struggling to keep your weight under control. 100 hours a week. Brutal. It has helped me lose weight. It is not an appetite suppressant. It can help fat people suppress cravings and motivation to be healthier is critical for changing your diet. Love you, brother. Again, this is a great point. It's something people really don't seem to grasp. If you have more energy, everything becomes easier. It's like turning on easy mode for life. A few years ago, before I was taking AG1, my health was trash. I was struggling to get through the day, had afternoon fatigue. The last thing I wanted to do was either use my brain or move my body. Didn't have the energy. Now, my biggest struggle every day is figuring out ways to use that energy. I'm exercising way more, doing a lot more with my friends and family, and of course, my work output has increased substantially. And you can fact check me. Check out the average length of my videos I was posting to YouTube three years ago. Need I say more? And one final testimonial. Love this one. Okay, here's the deal for me with this AG1 shit. I'm 41 years old and not the type to eat, drink, smoke, or sleep healthy, so I was skeptical. That being said, here's what I experienced. Day one, meh. Day two, afternoon fatigue was about 45 minutes late. Day three, zero afternoon fatigue. Day four, zero afternoon fatigue plus extra energy. Day five, again, zero afternoon fatigue plus energy, wondering, what the f really? See, this is the thing, right? The results for many people are just almost too good to be true. This, this is the same experience I had. My afternoon fatigue just vanished out of nowhere. I'm like, wait, what the f Why am I not tired in the afternoons anymore? Surely, it's not that AG1, is it? Turns out it was. Day six and seven, same thing. Day eight, same thing. Plus, I had the want to get things done around the house that I normally would slack off and not get done. Again, the point, extra energy, you'll need to use it, you'll find ways to use it. Day 9, 10, and 11, and today is day 12. I fucking love it. So however you managed to get me to buy it, I'm so glad you did. Thank you so much, SMR. It really changed me so far. Guys, this shit really works. Just try it. By the way, this is the reason I continue to relentlessly promote AG1. A lot of people get real fucking mad in the comments. Oh my god, Snake Oil Salmon sold out. Oh my god, he's a scammer. This is fraud. But Constantly... I'm pretty sure everyone making these comments is also currently short Tesla stock. I'm not particularly concerned about people having a negative perception, those folks suffering from small brain syndrome, still living in my bum's basement syndrome, etc., writing mean comments, claiming AG1's a scam or it doesn't work. I mean, bro, when I get feedback like this, this is what keeps me going. Just try this stuff for a month, and if you don't get these results, get your money back. See, it's a literal no-brainer. It's an IQ test at this point in time. Testimonial after testimonial after testimonial like this. Get your money back if it doesn't work. Just try it for a month, and if it doesn't work... Get your money back. Today's the day. It's finally time. Be like this guy who was a massive skeptic, but finally, after a thousand promotions in a row, caved in, tried AG1, and has results like this. Head to drinkag1.com slash SMR, or click the link at the pinned comment, and please, let me know how you're feeling in a few weeks' time. Now, if you'll excuse me, time to put my extra energy to good use. I'll be recording some more exclusive content for Patreon and my Twitter subscribers. So click the links at the pinned comment, see you over on Twitter and or Patreon, and don't forget to grab your AG1. Love ya.